was a friendly but naive king who wed a very nasty queen. The king was loved, but the queen was feared. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemesis, and today we're going to talk about more casting for the Resident Evil reboot, a movie that's coming out next year, apparently next year. I think it'll be distributed by um, by Sony, I think, maybe. And Constantin Films, uh, the people who produced the original ones, uh, they're also doing this one. But they got a, a definite, definitely a different approach this time around. It looks like they are possibly heard fan feedback and were like, we're going to do something more akin to the video games, bring more of these fan favorite characters to life, which to me, I'm like... I get it. They made Alice kind of a household name and they did the Red Queen and all that stuff. And that kind of a lot of people, a whole generation of actually of Resident Evil fans know Resident Evil because of those movies. And so those movies served as much as I'm not a fan of them. They did serve a purpose of widening the net a little bit of Resident Evil fans, which is great. I mean, that's what you want. And you also want the movies to be successful, which they were. You know, there was uh, I think it took six movies and they, they grossed over like one point three billion dollars or something like that which is awesome. I mean, for a franchise like Resident Evil, I still think you could do 1.3 billion with three Resident Evil movies if they were really good and not six. Um, so so I do sometimes make the joke that it took six movies to, to make them a billion dollars. Um, so yeah, I know it's just poking fun at them, but I, obviously everyone worked really hard on those movies. And even though I'm not a fan of them, uh, there are fans of them out there. So I'll try to be as respectful as I can when I mention them, but I do like to take jabs just to give you a heads up. Um, but this time around, they're not, you know, like the first movie gave us a lot of new characters. It was like Alice and Rain and Campo. Um, and then you had, uh, you know, uh, Spence and all these things. Um, but in this movie, we're getting, we're getting Claire, we're getting Chris, we're getting Leon and Jill. Um, the four biggest characters of the franchise, the fan favorites, definitely. Where's Barry? I don't know where Barry is. Uh, you know, hopefully they cast a Barry at some point. Um, or he shows up in another movie or something. I don't know. I, yeah, I think like him and Rebecca might get the short end of the straw on this one. Obviously, you don't want to have too, too many characters because, you know, uh, it, it, it'll over... Uh, populate the you know the plot of the movie or all these other things uh but wesker's in this too and birkin so you're you kind of want barry to be there so he could be uh wesker's kind of puppet at least for part of the movie but again that's a lot of character development it's a lot of stuff that if it's not important to the story and with them already combining the stories of resident evil 1 and 2 it's already kind of full enough so uh so if they did put barry or rebecca in here it was probably one of those cases where like if we put them in there they're just going to die and we don't want fans to hate us for doing that so maybe it's better, the lesser of two evils is to not have them. I don't know. I hope we still at least see them, mention them. I hope they're not just brought in to get killed. Like uh, they do in the other movies, the, the Milijovic movies are like, hey, there's Barry. And it's like, he doesn't look like Barry. And then he, th then he dies and you're like, okay, whatever. Um, so in this one, we have a couple of uh, casting things and um, actually something really big. I'm going to actually save this piece of information for another episode, actually. This is so cool to me. We're going to talk about it in the next episode, and then we'll do the Span Spencer Mansion photos in the video after that. So, yeah, you're getting five Resident Evil videos from me uh, this week. Uh, hopefully, I'll upload them all as soon as I possibly can. We'll start with uh, Donald Lowe. Um, he is a, a great actor. He's, he recently was in um, Gotham. I believe he was in Gotham. Um, and he's been in a lot of other great stuff. He was in Blade. Um, I liked him a lot in Blade. That's kind of when I first he first popped up on my radar. And uh, so we have from Bloody Disgusting, uh, John Squires over there, covered the story that from Deadline, actually, so it's originally from Deadline, uh, reported that Donald Logue uh, from Silent Night and Gotham has signed on to play Chief Irons uh, in the origin story adaptation, in quotes they say, of the games that's set in Raccoon City in 1998. So that's the other cool thing, is the movie's actually set in 1998, which is great. Um, so uh, so that I, I'm glad they're sticking to that. So jumping over the Deadline article, um, it says Gotham alum Donald Logue joins Resident Evil origin movie. Um, he'll play Chief Irons, who is a really disgusting, creepy dude. Uh, in the original video game, he uh, was, he's like the police chief, obviously. Um, he's corrupt, obviously. Uh, and I say obviously because mostly in these genre films, they do have that. It's like a corrupt, you know, police character. Um, and, uh, and Chief Irons has a thing for young girls. He's he's that kind of level creepy. And uh, and he also has a thing for taxidermy. And he also has a thing for combining those two things. Uh, so in the original game, he's actually seen, although you don't fully see it in explicit detail, but it's heavily implied 
that he kills the mayor's daughter who he has a creepy thing for. She's like this like 18, 19 year old girl. She comes to the police department looking for help after, you know, after being separated from her father, who's the mayor. And Irons is like, oh, this is my opportunity to finally be with her. And he brings her to his office, locks her in there and then kills her and then brings her down in his office underneath it. He has a secret room where he does taxidermy and he brings her down there and uh, and he actually tries to start stuffing her and he wants to preserve her porcelain skin, as he says, because she's like, you know, really white um, and fair skinned. Creepy dude. Uh, and in the new game, he's they, they show that he has a secret room where he does that kind of stuff. And they do imply again that he might be doing that to the mayor's daughter again in the remake. But he has it at an orphanage where apparently he also is around kids and stuff. And so there's other implications there. So this is a really gross character <laughs> that they're going to bring to screen here. I'm coming for you, Sherry! Get over here, you bitch! Donald Logue's such a great actor, um, and so seeing him going to portray this version, I'm curious how far they're going to go, if they're, if they're going to still imply that kind of stuff. One of the things I liked about the S.D. Perry novels of Resident Evil, there are like novelizations of the games, and S.D. Perry wrote them. One of the things that she put in there was uh, that Chief Irons, the, the, the police station used to be a museum, and that's something they talked about more in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, and the original Resident Evil, I think they mentioned once or twice. It used to be a museum, and then the police kind of, the mayor gave it to the police department, and they took it over because Chief Irons wanted the museum. Like, he was like, he liked the idea of being inside a museum, um, and so it had all these statues in there, which he liked statues and stuff, things and stuff like that. But then he started adding his taxidermy. That was one of the things in the S.D. Perry novels, was that the other police officers didn't like that. They were like uh, like Marvin Brando and stuff like that. They didn't like, they thought it was creepy that every once in a while they'd come to work and there'd be a new stuffed like a uh, pigeon or not pigeon but like a tiger or some kind of stuffed animal uh taxidermied animal now in in like the main hall of the police department or in like one of the office rooms or something and they're like why are these here so basically chief irons was like stuffing these creatures and, and putting them around the police department to decorate it and people didn't like it they thought it was unsettling <laughs> and i agree for your police chief to do that that's really creepy um so anyway, so Donald Logue is going to play him. That's really great. And we also have Chad Rook, who is from The Flash, uh, been on The Flash show, and Lily Gao, who was on The Handmaid's Tale, um, have also been cast in re uh, supporting roles. They haven't said what these roles are yet. Um, I can't tell from Chad Rook's look who he might play, just from like his standard photo that Deadline used. I can't really tell. Um, but Lily Gao, um, maybe, maybe, could be playing Ada Wong. Um, and that could be interesting too if they put Ada in here. Like I think that's, again, maybe too much plot. But if they have Ada working for Birkin and Wesker, she kind of works for Wesker a little bit in the game anyway. Like that's who she's stealing the G-Virus for. So there could be that. I also like the idea that both Wesker and Birkin will be in this as the villains because then there's more of a double cross storyline you can tell with them. You could have Birkins working on the G-Virus and Wesker's perfecting the T-Virus with the Tyrant Monster. You could have them being like competing scientists, like friends, but like behind, in their minds, they're like, he's my friend now, but I'm gonna betray him and take his uh, research. You could play on that uh, through it, just to show you how, that's what Umbrella does. They, they find these brilliant mind scientists, raise them up together and get them to turn on each other. <laughs> they, apparently they like that, I don't know because uh, it happens a lot in their video games. So uh, Chad Rook and Lily Gal joining the cast. Don't know who they're playing yet. I don't. If they've announced who they're playing, let me know in the comments, because I can't tell from Chad Rook. I'm like, who could he be playing? I don't know. Um, so yeah, and they, of course, joined the other cast, uh, you know, who's already been cast. We talked about in previous episodes. 
So well, this is neat. Um, this is great. Uh, with this movie, I really wanted to go back to the original first two games and recreate the terrifying visceral experience I had when I first played them, said uh, the director uh, Roberts of the movie. Because um, we have Ke Akaya, who's playing uh, Claire Redfield. We have Hannah, who's playing Jill. Um, we have Robbie, who's playing Chris Redfield. And uh, Tom Hopper as Wesker. Avon as uh, Leon. And Neil McDonough as William Birkin. Um, funny, did I just say the first and last names of the villains only? That's weird. That's got to be a psychological thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then we have a couple pictures of some actors that are in the movie. Um, and, uh, like, one of them, especially here, we have uh, Avon, who plays Leon S. Kennedy. And uh, and they show shots of him with, uh, you know, like, the the vest, the Leon vest that he has. It's not blue, though. Um, it, it looks, like, black, or maybe it's a dark blue, or maybe it's a, a, a muted color on purpose, because when they're filming it, maybe they'll make it pop more in post to fit a color palette of how they're filming it. I don't know. That could be it. Um, but one thing people noticed is Yvonne does not have blonde hair. And I don't know if that bothers me too, too much. I mean, sure, you want characters to be accurate to what they look like in the video games. But at the same time, you also want to try to bring something a little new if you can. And uh, you also want to go with what fits, what they feel fits the interpretation of the character uh, for the movie version. Because we're, they're not making the video game. Uh, you know, if Leon all of a sudden in the video games had dark hair, that would probably be a, a, a reason for like, hey, what the heck? Like when Chris in Resident Evil 7 looked very different than Chris in previous games. People reacted to that. Uh, I certainly re reacted to that because Chris is my favorite character. So I, I didn't really like that too much. Uh, so when they made Resident Evil 8, he looks more like classic Chris. I'm like, yeah, good. Uh, you know, I understand that they're like, oh, we got a new actor to play him and it's motion capture and we had to capture his face and stuff. It's like, great, but still make his hair and some of his features morph them into looking like the character because that's the what the game is like you can't really change continuity like that too much in the games in the movies you're adapting it so you can it's open for interpretation so the hair doesn't bother me uh really he's got the hair style uh it's like you know kind of parted in the middle kind of wavy uh from the remake uh so he the guy looks good he's a good looking dude um so he's he's gonna play leon and i think he'll do a good job um I think Donald Lowe is going to do a great job as uh, as Chief Irons, and uh, I'm curious to see who Chad and uh, and oh I'm sorry I blanked on her name Lily uh, I think I'm uh, yeah Lily uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who they're playing in the movie. So if you have an idea for who you think they might play, let me know down below. And if you have any comments about you know Leon or Donald Lowe or Chief Irons or any of those characters, uh, let me know your thoughts down below as well. And make sure, like I said, um, you know check out these articles. I'll try to put a link to the deadline article down below so you guys can read more about it yourself and learn more about who's behind the scenes of the movie. We could, we could cover that on a previous episode, so I didn't want to go over too much here. But these articles are pretty great because they talk about the production company and the producers and some of the people involved in this. So if you want to know the information, uh, even though we covered it before, but if you want to know it now, again, I'll put it in the link below the deadline article. So let me know what you think of all this stuff. And in the next episode, we're going to – it's probably a shorter episode, but we're going to talk about um, uh, this, this actress who has been cast – for a villain in the movie, a monster uh, from the Resident Evil 1 remake that I'm very excited. Uh, actually, when I saw her post this on Instagram and she totally spoiled the character that she's going to play, I was like, we got to talk about that because I'm such a big fan of that character. And the and we did a history of video on this character on one of the early episodes of Nemesis. So we'll get into uh, Lisa Trevor in the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned and you don't miss out on that. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.